I'm Dr. Chuck Betters. Welcome to Ask Dr. Betters. You know, over the years of ministry, five decades plus, one of the questions inevitably I am asked by men, am I to be the spiritual leader of my home? And if so, how? Well, it's a very good question. And I believe each home has a basic blueprint from which to operate. That blueprint is found in 1 Timothy chapter 3. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, now he's talking about an officer in the church, but the application of this is to all men who lead their families because you are the overseer of your home. He desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer, Here's the qualification to serve in the church as a leader. I believe it's the same qualification that must be applied to you as the spiritual leader of your home. He must be above reproach. In other words, there's no one out there who can wave a a white handkerchief and say he's not what he's cranked up to be. He's a hypocrite. The husband of one wife. I believe that means a one woman man, a man who has eyes for one woman one woman only, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, which also means teachable, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. Now here's the key, verse four. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submitted or under his protective care. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church, etc.? The qualifications are high to be a spiritual leader. You'll notice some of these qualifications speak of an emotional control, an emotional capability, not given to highs and lows, not a manic depressive sort of spirit but a person who is steady and one who is not looking for a fight all the time, is gentle, even-tempered, mild-mannered. Those are hard qualities. They must be practiced. Those are qualities that we learn by discipline. But to manage your own household well, the best picture I can give you is this. You take the manager of a baseball team. He's got 24, 25 players sitting on his bench. His job is to win the game. His job is to know his enemy, know his strengths, know his weaknesses, and then he is to know the qualities and strengths of the 25 men that are sitting on the bench. You don't take a pitcher, for example, and put him in the cleanup spot. You don't take somebody who is your best hitter and sit him on the bench. The manager's task is to position his players in such a way as to maximize the opportunity for success. His job is to put people in positions where they can and will flourish. So there are things that maybe your wife does better than you do. Those become her qualities. Those become her tasks. Maybe you have children Uh, who have an opportunity to shine in a particular role in your home. You put them in those positions where they can succeed. Managing your household means you manage your strengths, you manage your weaknesses in order to combat the enemies that are going to fight you in your home. Uh, If your wife's better at handling money than you are, then she should manage the money. If, If your husband uh, is uh, if you're if you're if you're the husband of, of a woman who has great gifts, you don't put those gifts on the bench somewhere. You put those gifts out there where they need to shine. Years ago, uh, I had the opportunity when we were really young in the ministry. I had the opportunity to put my wife into a situation where I knew she would succeed. I knew she had a heart to write. She was kind of born a writer and she had a tremendous gift to write. 
But writing takes time. You have to, you have, to have blocks of time where you, you sit down and, and, and you produce the things that are necessary to write a book. So early on in our marriage, <clears throat> we recognized that gift and we decided that that gift needed to be cultivated. Now, as our children grew older, we set aside more and more time for her to exercise that gift <clears throat> that she had of writing. The product of that is the, the, the many books that she has written. She's a prolific writer, a great writer. But what if we had set those gifts on the bench, <clears throat> never provided the time, never gave her the opportunity? Remember the first thing I did years ago when we couldn't even afford it was I, I bought her a typewriter. Uh, it was something that we bought before we bought anything else so that she would have a tool sitting there to be able to work on her craft. Spiritual leaders don't do all the work. Spiritual leaders delegate the work. Pastors, the same thing. There's a story in scripture of when the children of Israel were gathered together and they were all coming to Moses, the spiritual leader of Israel, all coming to Moses with their moans and their groans and their complaints and one by one, they started sapping the energy from Moses. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, came to him and said, you're doing this all wrong. You need to assign men from each tribe. You need to break this down into hundreds and fifties and twenties and tens and assign men to assume those responsibilities and you take the cases that nobody else uh, can take. Well, Moses did that, and he assigned the people to the tasks where he could receive all of the help that he needed to govern and to manage Israel. So I think to answer your question, the greatest quality that is necessary is to learn how to be a good manager of the resources that God has placed under your care. That means respecting your wife, respecting your children, honoring their gift mix, and entrusting them into a battle plan that will effectively give you victory over the many things that your family will face. I hope this helps. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.